Hello comic fanatics, before we get started, if you could just hit that subscribe button so that you do not miss out on future content, I would greatly appreciate it. With that said, let's begin. Today we go back. How far back? The Incredible Hulk, issue 314, published by Marvel, titled Call of the Desert. Hulk leaps across the Colorado mountains, landing in the open glade surrounded by burning trees and grazing wildlife. To his astonishment, a nearby buck, instead of bolting at his presence, stops to survey him. Sensing the hawk's confusion and his weakness, the young buck rams his antlers first at the jade goliath. He is met with maximum force though, a hit so powerful that it instantly breaks the antler's neck, leaving the buck's carcass for the carrion eaters. The hawk inspects the body and then immediately loses interest. Leaping to the sky onto uncharted territories, with no sentient being around to see him, but one, a little boy. With huh? wonder in his eyes, the child rushes home to tell his father of the marvel he has just witnessed. A few hours later, in the windy city of Chicago, at the Evanston campus of the Northwestern University, Dr. Leonard Sampson receives the news that the hawk has been sighted over the snow-capped mountaintops of the Rockies. Instantly, he enters the faculty lounge while listening to the radio, he overhears the approximate coordinates of his quarry's location. Assessing a map to gather his bearings, the doctor leaps to what he hypothesizes would be the hawk's destination. At that moment, in an apartment, Betty Ross stares out the window, contemplating the feelings that presently run through her that morning. Her new boyfriend Ramon inquires to her standoffish mood, and Betty apologizes. Understanding, Ramon turns on the radio to lighten her mood and a bulletin of the Hawks re-emerging into the public's eyes galvanizes Betty out of her trance. With a sense of urgency, she steals herself to prepare to do what she knows she must. Twelve hours later, Samson arrives at the ruins of the Gamma Base, where it all started. Years ago, a punk kid named Rick Jones parked his car on the site while a live test was in motion. Once aware of his presence, Bruce runs out to the site to get rid of the youth. Knowing that there is no time, Banner shoves the kid into a trench, thereby taking the full impact of the blast. Gamma radiation penetrating into his body and fusing into the molecular structure. He should have been dead instantly, but instead he was transformed into something different. Something like the Hawk. Galvanized out of his daydream, the doctor monologues to himself on how he knew this is where the Jay Giant was going, the birthplace of the Hulk, the only place that ever felt like home. Thanks to Bruce Banner. Upon hearing the name Banner, Hulk charges Samson, knocking the wind out of the sail. Then following up with a vicious uppercut. The Doc retaliates with a backhand causing the Hulk to stumble to the ground. Samson dives under the upheaval to earth and hefts it, causing the Hulk to become unbalanced. While he is off-centered, Samson takes the opportunity to lift a left hook, but to no avail. The Emerald Goliath returns the favor. Out of nowhere, the Hawk turns and sees Juggernaut? With no warning, the unstoppable force bullets towards him. Hawk swings a mighty blow, but it passes right through Jughead. From the Juggernaut's direction, a new form arises from the debris. Modoc? He fires a laser beam, but the Hulk dodges it in time. As the fight ensues, Samson recovers his recorder and verbalizes the Hulk's actions. It seems he is fighting imaginary foes. The doctor deduces that it must be Banner causing these hallucinations, causing his alter ego to battle enemies that are not there. But the Jay Goliath catches wind of the trick. Showing a sign of intelligence, the Hulk turns his back to the chimeras of his mind, letting them play out their actions knowing they can do him no harm. Once again, Samson approaches the Hulk, but he too is dismissed as an illusion. The doctor takes this opportunity and subdues the green and purple rage with one mighty blow. While sprawled on the floor, Samson deduces that Banner caused the illusion and that therefore a much bigger player in the game now. Since Bruce's presence is more in the beast, his personality can be identified 
and singled out. If he can be singled out, he believes he can separate the bodies of the two for good. What is Doc Samson's plans? Can the Hawk and Bruce truly live separate lives? Make sure you hit that bell icon at the top right to find out in the next episode. Until then, make sure you like this video. And if the story intrigues you, make sure you pick up the issue itself. For because of time restraints, I cannot include every panel, therefore the whole story. Until the next time, my friends, keep reading.